satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. So within supervised machine learning is where LLM fits, where you're actually supervising how a particular machine is learning a particular thing. Now, before I even go there, let me take like two minutes to say, how can even machines learn? How does that even make sense, right? Because machines, and like you mentioned, right, a lot of people will talk about, say, transistors or, you know, things around that. But what is really going on, right? So let's just talk about that for a few minutes, just so that, and then we can go to LLMs because the application of that is inside LLMs, right? So I'll tell you, first of all, right, when you talk about machine learning, right, so the two types of, you know, things in supervised machine learning, and I'm super simplifying this, right, because it's all, all audience are here, right? So first is purely something called, you know, regression, and the second is called classification. Now, don't worry about the actual terms. I'll give you an actual example, right? Regression would be something as simple as if you were to predict the success of a podcast, what will be the variables that will go into it? The length of the podcast, right? Is the topic contemporary or not? You will also see the person who's coming in, how popular are they? You will have various kinds of parameters to go ahead and predict arguably whether this podcast will be successful or not. I'll keep it very simple. For now, length of the podcast and how successful, in other words, how many viewers will it have, right? So on the x-axis, if I just plot a simple graph, on the x-axis is how many viewers will a podcast get? And on the y-axis, I simply say, what is the length of a podcast? Can I say that there is a relationship where the lower it is, probably the higher number of users will, or higher number of viewers, not too low also. If you make a one second podcast, Nobody wants to see that, right? So there will be an optimum thing and there is a curve that you can draw mm. to say, based on so many podcasts you've done, this is the most optimal curve to get X number of views, Y needs to be the exact duration, right? In the future, suppose the way we are having a free-flowing conversation, you say, okay, I know that I exactly needed 43 minutes of podcast, which is there to hit the optimal sweet spot. But you know what? The conversation with Saket was really good and we went to 55 minutes, right? So let me see on the same curve, where will this fit in to say, suppose it is 55 minutes, how many viewers can I expect? Are you with me till here? It's very straightforward. Number of uh, the duration versus number of viewers, right? And there is a graph that you can make around that. That graph, every time you get a new user, new podcast, can I say can potentially change slightly? Why? Because there'll be a new dot on the graph, which says, again, based on the actual duration, oh, this did very well while the duration was very high. So there'll still be another dot there. But the line that you've made that line, you want a line which will cross most, if not all the dots that you've created using your podcast. The tuning of that line is called machine learning. It's as simple as that. I'll take, I'll tell you again, one step slightly deeper. Again, I'm super simplifying this, where if you remember in the school, when if very basic algebra, right? The equation of a straight line was y equals mx plus c. Super simple, right? This was a straight line that you could draw on a two-dimensional graph which is out there. Now, what we always were told was for any value of x, you will get the value of y. That's the meaning, right? Here is a line. Give any value of x, you'll get the value of y if you know that equation. We always thought m and c, which were constants, were constant. It's only y and x which is actually changing. In machine learning, you tune the M and C. It's really that simple. Again, what I'm trying to say, I'll take a step back. If you think about a line, think about how many variables are there. Y equals MX plus C. For any given value of X, you get the value Y. M, which is basically the slope of the line, and C, which is supposed to be the intersection with the Y axis, were always supposed to be constants. Now this line can be any line on the graph, but suppose your, remember the example we took, which was the duration 
versus how many people who are, uh, uh, you know, how many people actually watch it, right? In that, the line can be moving slightly on the right, slightly on the left, depending on more data. So the more data you provide, the line adjusts towards left and right. And how do you adjust a line? By changing M or C. So you're basically plotting reality onto a paper. That's what machine learning boils down to. When you plot the reality, and this is supervised machine learning, remember that. When you plot the reality, you are getting a curve. Hmm. Now that curve, you can use any value of X on that curve. Right? A good example which everybody uses, right, is let's take the house price versus the size of the house. Can I say the higher the size, the higher the price of the house generally, and I'm simplifying this, this is linear regression, right? super simplified. There can be multiple variables, right? Which locality, how many bedrooms, blah, blah. forget about all of that. Simple. House size versus house, uh, you know, house price, right? Suppose in this area of Versova, right? You get 50 houses and their sizes and their prices plotted on a very simple graph. So when you plot that, in general, you'll have as the high sizes go up, the prices of the houses are going up. So you will have dot, dot, dot. You'll probably have 50 dots. And you will have one line that is close by. You're not accurate, but close by. If it's a straight line, it'll be close by. Now, the tuning of that line is what you're doing with every new dot. Because this thing called the loss and the cost function, where every time you get a new dot, the line slightly moves. And that moving line, the final line which is coming, and every time you get, oh, here is another 100 houses, and the data for 100 houses. So now I can move the line more so that the distance between the line and the majority, if not all the dots, is the least which is out there. That's the cost. You reduce the cost between every new data. So now, forget about the data that you already had. If you're a travel, you're a real estate agent, and you say, okay, now I'm looking in this, this society, uh, a house with X square feet. What is the corresponding price of that house? You just have to look at that graph and say, okay, for this X, which is the size of the house, the Y, which is the price of the house, should be this. And you can accurately. Now, I've super simplified this because it doesn't always is a straight line. You can actually make it a curve because house prices will not increase infinitely with infinite, you know, they'll actually become flat beyond a point and you can't even get houses which will be beyond a particular size, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, out there also, when you actually look at something called logistical regression, uh, when you do classification, whether this podcast will be successful or not, right? Whether this is spam or not, whether you know, it'll rain today or not. That's where you use something called the sigmoid function where the output is always zero or one. Right now, the output was regression, which is like, it can be any price for any given size which is there. If you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip.